The world getting a lot more dangerous this week. The Israeli-Hamas conflict blowing up just as a commercial airline over Ukraine is shot down. And all this is happening after the administration just claimed it's helping making the world a safer place. I think that there have been a number of situations in which you've seen this administration intervene in a meaningful way that has uh, substantially furthered American interests and substantially improved uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the tranquility of the of the global community. So have the administration's aid and trade policies actually made the world a safer place? Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Here with us is Elizabeth McDonald, Rich Carlgaard, Mike Ozanian, along with Rick Unger and John Tamney. Rich, have the administration's policies made the world safer? Well, look, it's been a bad, not a good week for global tranquility. But I will say that aid and trade, as practiced by every administration since the end of World War II, has been good for global peace, generally speaking. We haven't had a world war since the 1940s. And what preceded World War II was a global trade war in the 1930s. So trade is absolutely essential. Aid we can debate. I'd personally like to see more trade and less aid. I don't think the Obama administration could take particular credit for this because it's just been U.S. policy since mm -hmm. the end of World War II, and it's been a good one. Well, Rick, let's take the aid portion of that equation first and talk specifically about aid to the Palestinian Authority, which has amounted over $3.4 billion over the past several years, with $440 million pending. Now, the Palestinian Authority allowed into their, into their organization Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. They plant weapons. They store their weapons in U.N. schools in the Gaza Strip. I mean, these are bad people should we be giving money to an organization that has them in their fold in a, in a word no uh, this this would be to me the key example of where aid is way out of line i think you have to be a little bit careful when trying to apply that to every situation around the world I, there are places where our aid does increase the peace but no in a situation where a terrorist organization has partnered with the palestinian authority uh, no, we should have cut off the dollars on the day it happened. Emac, what about the Palestinian question? I mean, once again, you have, you have money being given to an organization that, is, that has in its midst, right in its midst, as, as partners, terrorists. Yeah, and you know, speaking to officials and law enforcement, this is a tricky issue because, of course, we want to protect women and children in these countries with aid packages. But when you give aid to terrorists and governments, they tend to just hoard it for themselves mm -hmm. and treat those individuals, those innocents, as collateral damage. So you're right, David, and I agree with Rick. We should not be giving any aid to the Palestinian organization or any terrorist in any government and in any part of the world. We seem to be doing that routinely. And the problem also so with this president is, for example, he said he never was for NAFTA because it benefited investor, investors. So while he speaks that he is for trade, he wants limited trade that only in, uh, advances the causes of his cronies that will advance him in office. All right. Well, let's get back to the to the blow ups around the world, Mike Ozanian, and they are blow ups. The president claims we just heard his spokesman say because of his aid and trade policies, the world is a more tranquil place. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen any evidence of that. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, I we mean, should mention, by the way, Wednesday, the administration came out with new sanctions. Some people say they were toothless sanctions, that they don't really involve closing off short-term funding. They, they don't close off day-to-day -day funding or stop U.S. firms from doing business with the Russian firms. The very next day, we see this airliner shot down. I, I think uh, the president has been offering a dishonest narrative of peace and tranquility uh, going back to Benghazi. Uh, that was a narrative they were trying to sell then, and obviously it wasn't true. So no, I, I don't think his policies have helped peace and tranquility throughout the world. John Tamney, what do you think? Well, you know, yeah, I, I don't think the Obama administration has proved, uh, improved things, but I think that hardly makes it unique. Uh, my problem is with the aid in general. We talk a lot on this show about the fallibility of politicians, but seemingly when it comes to foreign policy, they can do no wrong. I would argue that a lot of our global involvement makes us less safe, and I also would argue I don't like the idea of putting the American worker on the hook for what the well-being of countries around the world. I think that's wrong. Rich, you might enjoy the idea of free 
trade, and certainly I do. I think it's led to prosperity around the world. But when they claim that their sanctions are doing good in any way, shape, or form in Russia, they're laughing. We know that Putin and all the Russians are laughing at these sanctions. They're toothless, are they not? Yeah, but that's because, you know, this administration is terrible at using kind of back-channel diplomacy that every president has used. You know, the, the first George Bush was very good at back-channel diplomacy. The grown-ups have left the room, and, uh, and now we're left with amateurs in this administration. But just, you can't blame it on trade. And I just want to go back to the context that we haven't had a world war since the 1940s. Mm -hmm. We are doing generally better. We're in a bad patch now, and this administration isn't helping things. But generally, things are much better today than they were a century ago. Okay. Well, Emac, you can't blame trade. On the other hand, you can't say, as the administration does, that their sanctions are working. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And David, as you've pointed out already, you know, the Russian sanctions are demonstrably toothless. They only go after, what, 17 companies right. that are owned by three individuals close to Putin. Eleven of them are owned by one man in Russia. I say, as the GOP has said, do sanctions on the entire banking and, and energy sector in Russia. Russia lives off of its oil and mm -hmm. gas. Hit that, hit that hard, shut that down. It will hurt our interests like ExxonMobil's deals with Rosneft, right. and that's an issue. But you know what? If you do that, then Russia will sit up and take notice. Okay. And, Rick, the fact is, I know the Europeans wouldn't yeah. like it if we did it, but screw the Europeans. Well, no, you can't say that. This is the problem. I getting, can say it. I just did. It. You can say it. it doesn't <laughs> and make I think it right, we should. unfortunately. Look, first of all, let's be a little bit careful about one thing. I think drawing some connection between the announcement of more sanctions on one day and the plane crashing the next day, you better be careful about that. They don't necessarily go together. No, but hold on a second. But that's what the administration is saying. This isn't well, me they, saying. They, they say their sanctions are making the world a more tranquil no, no, no. place. I, I, Verbatim. That's what they I, said. I say they're wrong. I know. I'm simply saying that there doesn't necessarily have to be a connection. I get your point, though. This happened right after they said right. that. But but more to the point, this is where you can't be too simplistic. We do have important allies in Europe. They do matter to us. We do matter to them. And we don't live in an interconnected world where we can simply You know what? There are a lot. And what, this is when you. But I them. hear what you're saying. In Europe, does depend a lot on Russian gas. This is a time for Europe to step up. A lot of Dutch people were on that plane and they died. This is when you, you rethink the reset, you put ballistic missiles back into Eastern Europe and you hit the Russian banking and oil sectors really Michael hard. Michael Zanian, final point. I, I, I go ahead. I would say you don't even need sanctions. You need to do what Ronald Reagan did, which is you go with a strong dollar policy. That will actually even help our European partners because it will lower the cost of oil and other sources of energy. Gentlemen, lady, we got to leave it at that.